Hi everyone, and uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've, I want to make this video just for my own, my own reasons, I guess you could say. Uh, I, I, I know there's a ton of videos out there that show, you know, the, the, the beginnings of how to set up an off-grid battery operated system. Not even solar, just if you have a battery and an inverter. Uh, how to connect that stuff together and what you can get out of it. And explain each of the parts in a very beginner basic way. That way it's very easy to understand. Um, again, I know there's, there's plenty of other videos out there, but I know when I first started doing this, I watched every beginner video I could find just to see how different people went through the process. So I wanted to make my own video showing the process as well. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to, this is going to be the most basic battery operated off-grid setup you can do. Uh, and what it entails is a battery, an inverter, and the wiring to connect them. Um, first I just want to start with the battery. I have a Red Odo 12 volt 100 amp battery. It's a lithium iron phosphate. Uh, I think you can get them on Amazon right now for $350 to $380. Uh, so they're not that expensive. This thing will last me 10 years by charging it from 100, or charging it from zero to 100 and then discharging it from 100% back down to 0% it'll last me 10 years. I mean, it can do, it can do 3,000 cycles like that. You know? and so you're looking at eight to 10 years of doing that every day. So, but here's the battery. That's what the battery is. And it's, it's 12 volts. That's the same kind of voltage of like the battery that's in your car, that starts your car. Even though it's a different type, this is for, uh, a car battery is for a real big amperage push start your car these are like a slow burn to keep things powered in the long term so we have our battery and what we're what we're going to be doing is we're going to be connecting this battery to this alpha inverter this is a 1500 watt inverter now what that means 1500 watts is the maximum amount of wattage that you can plug into it and it will stay running. So whenever you see, whenever you see an inverter, you'll see the, you usually see a, a big, a big number on there with the W that says it's 1500 watts. And that's when you need to look around and see what you need to have powered. Uh, you know, what I want to do is I just want to connect this thing up and, you know, and plug in a fan because I'm hot right now. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to, I'm going to plug in a fan, maybe plug in this computer over here, you know, just stuff like that. But what, what an inverter does is it takes the power from this battery, a 12 volt battery, and it inverts it from 12 volts to 110 volts. So it basically converts the, it converts the energy or it converts the, the voltage from 12 volts to 110 volts. Uh, now, 110 volts is what uh, the United States uses for your household plugs. Anything that you plug into the wall uh, is, is 110. It's a 110 outlet. What we can do with this is we can take the energy from this battery and convert it to energy that we can use to power anything around the house that is a maximum wattage of 1500 watts. So the, the most important part about this is knowing what you're trying to power and buying the inverter that will fit your needs. Okay, well what this, what this inverter has 
it has an off on switch so you want to make sure that's off and it has a couple of uh, outlets or receptacles and then it also has a couple of USB ports if you need to charge a phone or something else that uh, is uh, powered by USB okay how to wire this all up is you need cables now these cables these are these are four gauge cables um, for this distance four gauge is plenty but you want to have at least four gauge cable or two gauge cable to power 1500 watts with this wire you can you can actually just go to an auto parts store and get battery cables that's basically what these are are they're just battery cables we have our cables we have our inverter we have our battery and one other thing that I highly suggest even though in a, a dire situation you don't need it but you you should really have a fuse you want to have a fuse between these two items uh, so that way if anything goes wrong these wires just won't catch on fire um, the fuse will pop before anything happens and it will disconnect everything that's going on so I highly recommend a fuse so the first thing that we're going to do is we're, we're, we're going to wire up one side so let's go ahead and wire up the negative side first so we're going to take this, this terminal bolt off take our black cable for negative and let's put it on there and the tools, the tools that we're using for this is just a Phillips screwdriver and a socket wrench with a 916 socket. So let's kind of tighten it down by hand and then use a screwdriver. Go ahead and get it nice and snug. Now you don't want to like really crank it down, but you want to make it so the wire doesn't move. Uh, if, if, if there's a loose connection, it can cause like arcing uh, on the wire and that's, you don't want that. So you want to make sure it's nice and tight, but you don't want to crank it down really hard. Just make it so the wire doesn't move in the terminal anymore. And then we're going to go ahead and connect this right to our inverter. And you can see that on the inverter, there is black and red, and then there's also black and red on the battery. So you want to make sure and connect it to the black one. Negative should always go to negative. You never want to cross them over. And then you'll want to put your washer on. Washer and then lock washer. And then screw this in. And again, you want to tighten it down. Don't crank it down, but you want to tighten it so this cable doesn't move. All right, so there's that. Our negative side is all connected. Now all we gotta do is connect the positive side. And like I said before, you can just take a, a cable and connect the positives together and this will work. But I always suggest having a fuse in between. So let's go ahead and connect these two cables to this fuse. down on each side and then we're going to put the fuse in just like that and then we're going to put the, the battery cable on and then another washer and then a lock washer and then the bolt All right. Yeah. And take our 916 wrench. Tighten it down. All right. And again, it should be nice and snug. This cable should not move. Okay. 
If it moves at all, you need to tighten it because you don't want arcing because if this shifts around, there'll be arcing uh, through the cable and that's what causes fires. Uh, it will, and it will uh, degrade, it'll probably degrade the life of your battery. Uh, it'll also degrade the wire. So just make sure that when you tighten stuff down, it does not move. It should be nice and snug. Okay, and now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We've already got our washer, we got our fuse. All right, so this should, this should feel like one, one piece now. These wires should not move. Go ahead and put our little cover on. All right, so this cable is ready. And what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and connect it to the inverter first. I like to connect, I like to connect the battery last in this sequence because you don't wanna connect the battery and then you have this you have, you have a live connection over here, and if this accidentally touches, you know, touches something, it could complete the connection and it could short out. So you always want to connect to your battery last. So let's go ahead, connect this, and again, we're connecting our cable, and then our washer, and then our lock washer, and then we're going to screw it down. And again, you should tighten it down so the wire doesn't move. Okay, inverter is completely connected. We got our fuse. Now all we gotta do is take our bolt off. Make sure your inverter is turned off when you do this. Okay, inverter's off. And usually, usually I, uh, you know, actually, I'm going to go ahead and grab it because I don't like this. I don't like the spark. But when you connect this, the first time you connect this to your inverter and you connect the battery to it, uh, there'll be a spark. But what you can do is, uh, is you can buy a resistor. And resistors, you can get a 10 pack for like five bucks. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab a resistor. And so I can use that so I don't get a spark when I connect it. Okay, here's a resistor right here. Uh, it is a 10 ohm resistor. Uh, I'll have a link to these in the description along with all the, this stuff. But what you wanna do is take your resistor, connect it to, touch it to your battery, and then touch it to the cable. And I like to keep it on for a few seconds. It just makes me feel good. Um, but honestly, you could probably just connect it for a second and then be done. So, but once you do that, Go ahead and take it off, and then you set it down on there, and bolt it in. And as you can see, my hand was probably hiding it, but there was absolutely no spark. Uh, if you do connect it, uh, and which I've done a few times, the spark, it's, it's, it freaks you out a little bit, uh, but with a 12 volt system, it, it's, it's not gonna harm you at all. Okay, let's take our screwdriver. Screw it down so it's nice and tight, but not cranked down. That way the cable, again, I want to emphasize this, that these cables should never move once you tighten them down. I see our cover keeps falling off. Okay. All right. And now our system is complete. That's, that's it. You just wire it up. So let's go ahead and turn this around. I want to make sure you can see this, so let's go ahead and just set it on something. There we go. So when I turn this inverter on, it should power on. All right. And that is perfect. It shows uh, the, cur the, the current voltage that the system is producing, the inverter. It shows it at 106, which will be fine. This number is uh, the voltage of your battery, and my voltage right now is 13.4. Uh, uh, so the battery is you know, probably around 80 or 90 percent, something like that. Um, and then in the blue, that shows the amperage, and that's the amperage that your device that you have plugged in is using. So uh, let's go ahead and plug in some stuff. 
just to kind of show you that just by hooking up this battery and this inverter, you know, the things that we can plug in. And this does have two outlets, but I'm going to go ahead and just plug in the power bar because, you know, it gives me more outlets. Okay. You know, first of all, let, let's go ahead and just, I mean, a lot of people use laptops for off-grid stuff because they don't use very much power, so let's just go ahead and plug in this laptop, turn it on. Oh, no, that helps. There we go. Okay, that laptop's booting up. Like I said before, uh, I was kind of hot, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a fan. I mean, maybe you had this system because you want lights. Oh my god, this is like an old 100 watt light bulb. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And I know it's going to work because that's a 100 watt light bulb, but this is a 1500 watt inverter. So let's go ahead and just plug it into here. Turn on this light. There we go. So as you can see, just by using this battery and this inverter, um, I have a fan running, I have this light on, I have my laptop running, um, and it's it's using 1.6 amps, which you know if you multiply the amps times the volts, uh, that's how many watts that you're using right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to pull out a, a multimeter, so that way we can kind of see. Uh, exactly what we're pulling. So yeah, we're pulling 16 amps right now, and what that means is since this is a 100 amp hour battery, and actually it's gone down, it's gone down to 14, it's gone down to 14 and a half amps. With this 100 amp hour battery running this this light, this fan, and that laptop, I could run it for a little under seven hours consistently. Uh, and that's just with this small little setup. I just wanted to let people know just how easy it is if you just have a battery and an inverter and you can get the cables from uh, you know, your auto parts store, how easy it is to, to have a quick setup like this that can run multiple items uh, and it can run it for you know, for hours and hours and hours. I mean, like I said, this you could run this for almost seven hours, and you could buy LED lights that are a lot that use a lot less wattage. That's a hundred watt light bulb, uh, a hundred watt incandescent light bulb. Uh, but if you have an LED light, uh, that would reduce it by eighty watts. So, uh, I mean, you could that would give you out you know a lot more hours of runtime. All right, if you have any questions about how I connected any of this together or why I connected it the way I did, uh, please leave them in the comments. All of this stuff is going to be in the description along with links. Yeah, and if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more of my content, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Bye-bye.